My name is Dustin Mills. I'll be your tour guide today on ISO SAE 21434, Clause 7. This introductory lesson is designed to give those charged with its implementation a general understanding of the clause requirements. My goal here is to make you knowledgeable enough to think through your current tools and processes, equipping you with just enough understanding to expedite both gap analysis and gap remediation activities, but not so much content that you need to be the cybersecurity experts. For those of you who do need a deeper understanding, though, we will have a requirement by requirement deep dive right after this, including some work product examples. For now, let's get started with this overview. What does distributed to cybersecurity activities mean? Cybersecurity activities that are done in a distributed manner. It means supplier management, managing the cybersecurity responsibilities between you and your suppliers. It can also apply to internal supply teams, depending on the size of your organization, so it's not necessarily external suppliers. But this is the clause where ISO 21434 gets pushed down through the supply chain. If you are a supplier and an OEM or a customer has given you a cybersecurity interface agreement, asked for a TARA, a cybersecurity plan, or made any reference for you to follow ISO 21434, it is because of this clause that they did that. In fact, it's likely because of this clause that your organization is seeking to become ISO 21434 compliant in the first place. Now that you are taking ownership of cybersecurity activities, however, it is here in Clause 7 that you will push ISO 21434 down through your supply chain. You will be the one assessing cybersecurity capabilities, assigning cybersecurity responsibilities, and verifying the activities of your supply chain. Overall, this is one of the easier clauses within the standard to understand. There's only eight provisions and one work product created. Implementation can be a challenge, however, and that's mainly because you become responsible for the cybersecurity of your supply chain. Questions like how to evaluate the cybersecurity capability of your suppliers, uh, as well as how to track all of the different activities becomes a challenge. For those reasons, we typically implement this clause last because it's much easier to understand the cybersecurity requirements of your supply chain once your own cybersecurity processes are well-defined. Let's talk implementation. The teams typically responsible for this are going to be the product cybersecurity team, of course, uh, as well as supplier management. Depending on your organization, product development might help set cybersecurity goals, compliance in terms of checking on vendor activities, uh, as well as risk management and legal. If you've been in automotive engineering a while, you should be familiar with the V model system development lifecycle. It's important to see where safety and cybersecurity parallel each other in the development process, so we've included it here. Clause 7 doesn't necessarily pertain to any one of these areas, but can pertain to any part that you have outsourced. Things to consider. Clause 7 has only one work product, and that is the Cybersecurity Interface Agreement, or the CSIA. The CSIA is similar to the DIA, the Design Interface Agreement, created for functional safety. As these two documents can be triggered at the same time or with similar processes, uh, they could also leverage existing DIA templates, uh, as well as any security-related assessments that your vendors currently go through. Responsibility and approval procedures can be shared, and the same supply management team can also help coordinate milestones and the coordination of security and safety products into the product development lifecycle. Potential differences and conflicts include vulnerability management, and end of cybersecurity support. From a cybersecurity perspective, end of cybersecurity support will extend much beyond that of functional safety and is something that should be considered during the integration process with your vendors. Let's walk through the general process. Typically, you're going to assess the cybersecurity capabilities of your partners, make sure that you are working with those partners who do have cybersecurity in mind and good processes for managing the cybersecurity of their own products. Uh, you're going to establish the cybersecurity goals of the item or component or overall project. 
Uh, then we're going to do RFQ. In the RFQ, there are three requirements. Uh, one is a formal request for the supplier to adhere to ISO 21434, uh, the mention of a cybersecurity interface agreement, uh, and then the actual cybersecurity goals and requirements of the item or project will be listed in the RFQ. Next comes the cybersecurity interface agreement. This is where you get more granular in terms of listing all of the responsibilities that you and your suppliers will be doing. And then, of course, is the uh, tracking and verifying the performance of the cybersecurity interface agreement, managing vulnerabilities, and, and, and dealing with the end of cybersecurity. If you've seen the overview video, these terms should be familiar. Provisions are basically things that you need to do, and the work products are the proof of you doing those things. Here is a summarized view of the provisions and work products in this clause. You'll see that the top three do not contribute directly to a work product and that the bottom five do. The first one is measuring the cybersecurity capability of your supplier uh, is uh, a recommendation to get documentation of proof from the supplier. Uh, the third one addresses the RFQ with the three additional things as stated before. Numbers four through eight deal with the cybersecurity interface agreement. Uh, number four, listing specific requirements, which we'll get into later. Uh, five, stating that it should be agreed upon before you begin those activities. Uh, six, addressing vulnerability management. Uh, seven, notification of conflicts. And the last one, uh, specifying that the responsibilities should be listed in a uh, responsibility maker. Well, you made it. That is it for Clause 7. Overview. Hopefully this helps the product cybersecurity team and the uh, vendor management team understand uh, what is ahead of them in terms of implementing ISO 21434 into their existing processes. Uh, for those of you looking to dig into some details, uh, our next content is available on our vehicle security engineering cloud or VSEC. So head over to vsec.blockharbor.io, log in, and we will jump into the specifics of Clause 7. There's also a ton of free content in VSEC, including car hacking related CTF challenges and more. So have a look if you are not already registered.